Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. In the last video we looked at command words used in science exams and how to answer those kinds of questions. In this video we're looking at more command words, how to answer the six mark essay question, questions involving ethics and calculations. Here's the next command word, explain. Explain means use science to say why something happens. Here's a typical question. Explain why the reaction rate increases at higher temperatures. This question's worth two marks, so the examiners are looking for two pieces of scientific information. Here's a typical answer. Particles have got more kinetic energy, therefore there are more collisions per second. You can see that we've now used science to say why something happens. Here's one more command word, evaluate. Evaluate means use your knowledge and understanding, as well as any information given, to consider evidence for and against something. You may also be asked to give a conclusion. The six mark essay is often an evaluate question, so let's look at an example and how to tackle it. This is about different types of light bulbs. There are three types of light bulbs used in the UK. These are incandescent bulbs, compact fluorescent light bulbs, CFL, and LED bulbs. Some information about these bulbs is given below. Use the information, as well as your knowledge and understanding, to evaluate these different bulbs coming to a conclusion. We're going to look at three typical answers. Here's the first one. Incandescent bulbs are quite cheap, but they don't last very long and they're not very efficient. CFL bulbs are quite cheap and they last a long time. They're also quite efficient. LED bulbs are expensive, but they last a very long time. They are very efficient. Now, this is an example of a weak answer for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the answer does not really compare the different types of bulbs. Each bulb is simply described, but not really compared. Secondly, this answer does not use any science to describe why a particular bulb is better. It doesn't use any data at all from the table, and it does not come to any conclusion. Here's an example of a better answer. LED bulbs are more expensive than incandescent or CFL bulbs, so they cost more to buy and to replace. However, LED bulbs last a lot longer than either incandescent or CFL bulbs. This means that they won't need to be replaced as often. LED bulbs at 80% efficiency are also much more efficient than incandescent bulbs at 2% efficiency, or CFL bulbs at 7% efficiency. This means that they'll cost less to run per hour, and they save money. Also, because they'll use less electricity, less pollution will be generated. On balance, LED bulbs are the best of the three. Now, this is a good answer. The bulbs have been properly compared using data, and some science has been used, for example by stating that LED bulbs will cost less to run as they're more efficient. The answer also has a final conclusion on which bulb is better. Here's a really good answer. Now you'll notice that this answer is almost the same as the last one, but if you look at the final paragraph, you can see that this student has used some of their own knowledge and understanding of science. They've stated that since the LED bulb is more efficient, less electricity will be required, so less fossil fuels will need to be burnt, and less carbon dioxide released, and that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So not only have they used science, they've also been very specific. Rather than simply saying pollution, which is not specific, they've said carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. This is an excellent answer. Coming up, we're going to look at ethics questions and calculations. OK, we're going to look now at a question that often comes up, and that is, which of these questions cannot be answered by science alone? You're normally given a selection of questions to choose from, and one of them cannot be answered by science alone. The key word to look for is should. If you see that word, then that question cannot be answered by science alone. Here are two examples. We've got should caffeine be added to soft drinks, and also should fluoride be added to water. The word should tells us that we cannot answer these questions using science alone. That's because these questions are about personal choice or ethics, and you should remember that, as you often asked why these questions cannot be answered by science alone. OK, let's finish now by looking at calculations, and one calculation that you're often expected to do is calculate a mean. Here's an example. 
This table shows the temperature rise when different masses of a chemical are added to water. We're going to calculate the means. If we start with the first row, we've got 2.5, 2.7 and 2.9. You can see that these numbers are all relatively close together, so there are no anomalous results. To calculate the mean, first we add together the three numbers. So we've got 2.5 plus 2.7 plus 2.9. Now at this stage, it is critical that you press equals on your calculator. If you don't, the final mean answer will be wrong. Adding these together gives a total of 8.1. We've added together three numbers, so to calculate the mean, we divide the total by three, giving us a mean of 2.7. We can do the same calculation to work out the mean for the second row. This gives a value of 5.73 recurring. However, we need to round this to one decimal place because the data is given to one decimal place. OK, let's look at the third row. In this row, we've got an anomalous result. Repeat 2 is clearly much bigger than the other two repeats. We must not include this anomalous result in the mean. So to calculate the mean, we add together 7.2 and 7.4. This gives us 14.6. And remember to press equals. We now divide this number by 2 because we're looking at two numbers now, not three. This gives a final mean value of 7.3. Just one final piece of advice on calculations. Always make sure that you write your calculation out as well as the final answer. If you make a mistake on the calculator and your final answer is wrong, but you've written out the calculation correctly, you could still get a mark. OK, hopefully these videos have helped you gain a better understanding of how to tackle exam questions.